I think we want to go to their clip first um, before we get too far away from it, and I'll talk to you about it later. Um, I, I don't speak German very well, so I'm translating for you as well as I can under the circumstances, because some of the things I don't understand either. Um, but we're just going to muddle through this and, um, and see if we can get to the next clip and continue on our uh, visit to the concentration camp in Dachau. Here we go. <coughs> Excuse me. They are very small. There's one. And there. And up there. So in here you can see a living quarter. Lockers. If there even was such a thing. It could have been added later. Those are chairs. So you can see now the bathroom, washroom. <coughs> and there. So that is an aerial photography of the barracks an aerial after the of liberation. The and with the barracks it looks like that. One after one. And there, there was standing over here. I don't know what she said. That's the wind. So you see now the tower, and the tower was tall, very tall up there. And there's a bell, and that bell was in the tower and it was a church. <coughs> um, that is inside now. You see a cross. And it's, uh, it says um, it was a scary, scary death, a scary church. A scary church, you said. I don't know yet what that means, what that is, but I go inside now, and let's see. So I'm inside now, and that is a monument for the Yiddish people. They died. Well, that says that over six million Jewish people are died. Six million Jewish people died there.
example, I show that for the Jewish people in the United States of America, so maybe you can read it. Okay. So you see now the crematorium in summer 1944, and it was an illegal photograph taken by the Belgian prisoner Jean Bouchoux. The crematorium area. The SS had a crematorium built in the summer of 1940 because the number of dead had risen dramatically. It lay outside the prisoners' camp and could only be reached by passing to the SS camp. In 1942-43, a second building with a larger crematorium and a gas chamber was built. The gas chamber was, however, never used for mass killing, <laughs> Execu execution and murder operation were carried out in the crematorium area through. Already immediately after liberation, the crematorium ground served as a site of remember was remember, remember, remember I'm sorry. Several graves of ashes were laid out on the grounds. Numerous memorials and a garden lay out similar to that of cemetery still shape the former crematorium area today. It says think, think. Think how we are dying. We died here. Think about how we died here. And here is the crematorium. It is very big. And I feel not good. She's having trouble, she said. So there, those are now the disinfection chamber. Disinfection chambers. So I go in there. I think here comes the gas out. That's where they People put the gas in the in container. Here. When they are dead, they are over here. That's the area where they spray the, uh, sprinkle the ashes. After liberation, there are four, four chambers in here. This is now the waiting room. This is where victims were to be informed and using the supposed shower. It's where they waited to go to the showers. This means shower. And here's the bath. The bathroom. I mean, as the people cleaned up. By the time you got I there. Know it is that the water comes from here out. Person realized it wasn't water coming through the walls, it was there. So that is a dead chamber one. This is where the dead were to be through before they were cremated. Well, 
Okay, this is the execu execution site. Most hangings were carried out there. The victims were hanged directly in front of the burning oven. And that says the death chamber too. This room was, was used to store the corp corpses that were brought from the prisoner camp to be cremated. This means mass graves on the Leitenberg Hill during the exo Exhumation in 1955. They found this to an exclam exclamation. I can't say that word either. When they exhumed. In the death chamber at liberation, It says to honor the dead and to remind the living. So I found a Rus Russian Orthodox chapel, chapel. A Russian Orthodox church on the premises. So that's inside now. And I must think on the, on, on the kids who died yesterday and the day before yesterday in Rus Russian on that big massacre the 3rd of September and I'm really not happy about it I'm singing on that many kids She says she's remembering the children that got massacred in Russia So, that was for today and well maybe i can i showed you something interesting and maybe a few people was in here too a lot of years ago and so i have to say goodbye see you next time she was very adamant about reminding people that all these children had died in russia and she kind of filmed all of this uh, in remembrance of them, actually. Now, in the first clip, uh, I said that I was going to get back to you about something. Uh, and, and we will. First, I need to quote something from you here. Um, this is a, was a saying by a person named Santanyana. I'm not sure, a philosopher, maybe. And it says, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. And um, this is really an emotional show here. Um, back to the patches. I wanted to talk about the patches. In this book here, it gives the category of the patches. And uh, a, lot, a lot of people feel that this was always um, a Jewish, just Jewish people that was in those camps. That's not true. Because according to the patches that you saw in the film and in this book here, they were, they were done in categories. And they read as follows. Political, um, immigrants, professional criminals, Bible uh, forces. That would be people that study in the Bible uh, like like clergy and Bible students, homosexuals, and then the next one is the word is asocial, and I didn't know what that was, so I asked somebody, and what that means asocial means that's anybody that doesn't come in line with the norm.